Oh, uh, come on in. Hi. I'm... <laughs> this is the process. You can see it now. I bring boxes of books in from the garage where those are the books that have come from my study in um, in Girton. And eventually I've got to decide with all of them which ones should go to the new house and be part of the library there. Sometimes I put them on the shelves here as well. And which ones should go in a bag like this bag. Um which is going to be books we sell or give away. Look, this is huge concordance to Shakespeare. It's a wonderful thing to have. But I can't really keep it. I haven't got shelf space. And, um, you know, you can find it all on, online now. Anyway, obviously the old books and beautiful books I keep. But if you look here at this box, I've already dealt with one box of the same kind. This is an entire box of books about Bob Dylan. And funnily enough, it's... Um, this is Bob Dylan in his own words. It's just a compilation of all the stuff from his interviews over the day and lots of nice photos. Um, look, there is with Joan Baez. Uh, they got together for the Rolling Thunder tour, having been together much earlier. I love the combination of their voices. That's another Rolling Thunder picture. Anyway, it was funny that the box with the Bob Dylan stuff happened to turn up. Because this is the very week that everybody is thinking about Dylan because uh, 24th of May is, is his birthday, his 80th birthday. So naturally there's a bit of a Bob Fest going on, which pleases me because he's been, you know, to take a cliche, a soundtrack of my life, I bought the first record, I think the first long playing record, the first album, as we used to call them back in the day, on vinyl that I bought was Highway 61 Revisited and I scarcely bought a better record since. Anyway, I now have to decide. So um, this one, for example, I think, you know, I needn't keep. That'll go in here. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Um, I bought so many Bob Dylan books. There's Razor's Edge. That's about the never-ending tour. I don't think I can keep that. I probably can't keep the Hard Rain commentary. I'm going to have to get another bag for that. This, on the other hand, is a classic uh, Robert Shelton's first biography of course in some respects it's been superseded no direction home but it was it was it was epoch making in its own way and of course bob dylan's own account of himself chronicle i'll probably have to get rid of some of these it's very funny now this is sometimes when i was buying bob dylan books or i'd find them on av books or whatever you know i'd bring them home and maggie would say oh no not another bob dylan book and then this is actually I probably can't keep this one either but then I actually found a book called, oh no, not another Bob Dylan book. So of course I had to have it. But now I've got to, now I've got to think about seriously what I can keep. Luckily I've got a number of friends who are really sort of uh, bobcats, as they say, who are Dylan fans as well. So some of them can have some of that. Some I won't ever let go of. I mean, this is, I think, the best book on Bob Dylan ever written. Michael Gray's Song and Dance Man. This is the third edition of it. He also did a, a Bob Dylan um, encyclopedia, which I have on the shelf there, which I get a name check in. I did some thinking and writing about Dylan at various points, and he referenced, he referenced me in that. Um, but, you know, I won't be too sad losing some of my Bob Dylan books, because frankly, Dylan doesn't live in books. You know, he lives in the beautiful vibrations in the air and the kind of joy of his song. Although, come and have a seat. Although he, um, you know, quite rightly, in my opinion, won the, the Nobel Prize for Literature, um, as a poet, you might say, he's a bit more than a poet. Um, you know, poetry lives on the page. It has to carry its own music. Well, it doesn't live on the page. It needs to be spoken out as well. But, but it doesn't have that other dimension of of music. And in performance, Dylan not only with the music lifts the poetry off the page, but also in the way he speaks it, the way he sings it, the way he stretches some syllables and collapses others, and even more the way he reinterprets and reinvents a song every time. He's got this astonishing capacity um, to produce. Well, I love the phrase in, in Mr. Tambourine Man, which is, you know, a masterpiece. There's the <clears throat> that lovely line, isn't there? Um, if you hear vague traces of skipping reels of rhyme to your tambourine in time, 
I wouldn't pay it any mind. It's just a ragged clown behind. It's just a shadow you're seeing that he's chasing. And it's those skipping reels of rhyme that I particularly love. And although they look well on the page, they <coughs> they sound even better. And I follow Dylan to the extent of either when I can attending gigs or otherwise listening to uh, through bootlegs and things to many different performances of the same song. And it's like being admitted into the poet's workshop. It's like being able to read early drafts of Keats. You can see things. Uh, let me. Why not? I've got to pick it. Let me give you an example. Um, I think we're probably vaguely in tune. Um, and as I say, he doesn't live in the books. He lives, he lives in this. So one of my favourite songs of Dylan is I love the way it starts with a really wonderful descending chime of rhyme. Remember, it starts like this. They sat together in the park as the evening sky grew dark. She looked at him and he felt that spark tingle to his bones. Cause then he felt alone and he wished he gone straight Blame it on a simple twist of fate And you remember um, he has the lovers together before they part They walked alone by the old canal A little confused I remember well Stopped into a strange hotel with a neon burning bright He felt the heat of the night and it hit him like a freight train moving with a simple twist of fate. It's just amazing um, yeah, that it's kind of rhymes A, 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 if you think of the letters of it. This long park, dark, spark, and then it turns to the sound B, bo, bone, alone, and then always that eight rhyme at the end. Uh, you know brought on by a simple twist of fate. Um, so in that song, you start with, uh, they're in together in the park, then they're walking along by the canal. Um, and then it suddenly switches to the early morning and she's leaving. And you know that he's still asleep, unaware that it's all gone, he's all losing it. And she, it's a wonderful moment where having left him, you know, she drops the coin into the cup of a blind man at the gate. Forgot about a simple twist of fate. And then comes, and uh, yeah, there was a saxophone someplace far off played as she was walking through the arcade. She heard the melody rise and fade. The sun was coming up. She dropped a coin into the cup of a blind man at the gate. Forgot about a simple twist of fate. And then the way it goes on, on the record, on... on um, uh, he, he sings a verse about the man waking up alone and going to the window and realising that this is it, it's all over, she's gone. And what you're expecting him, I remember, I mean, I listened to it a lot on the record, so I went to see him live and what I expected him to play was this, at this point in the song. He woke up, the room was bare, he didn't see her anywhere. He told himself he didn't care He pushed the window open wide He felt that emptiness inside To which he just could not relate Brought on by a simple twist of fate So that's what I was expecting But at that moment in the song Dylan looks out and this is what he played and it's exactly the same scenario, but beautifully expressed in the same rhyme scheme, but with a different set of chimes. He woke up, and she was gone. He didn't see nothing but the dawn. Got out of bed and put his clothes back on. Pushed back the blind. 
He found the note she left behind Ah, but he could not Concentrate on anything Except a simple twist of fate I mean, that is, uh, that's genius uh, he, he rephrases it He keeps the rhyme scheme He gives you some other details I love he didn't see nothing but the dawn because we just had the sun was coming up in the other words and the kind of loneliness and finality of got out of bed and put his clothes back on pushed back the blind found the note she left behind but he can't even read it he could not concentrate on anything except a simple twist of fate and of course when you hear that other version of that verse against she dropped a coin into the cup of a blind man at the gate. The recurrence of the word blind, he pushed back the blind, blind in another sense, but we speak of blind fate. <coughs> it's extraordinary, and he does the same thing again. Um, again, uh, from Blood on the Tracks, I was expecting the verse after that, where he, she's gone, and now he's reflecting, and he's reflecting on, on the the mismatch between the power and depth and turmoil of feeling within and the sense that this should have been, the sense that this was the right girl and that yet fate would not allow it. He expresses that on the record like this. People tell me it's a sin to know and feel too much within. I still believe she was my twin. But I lost the ring Ah, she was born in spring And I was born too late Blame it on a simple twist of fate So there, the mismatch The beauty of the woman born in spring I was born too late The feeling that you can know and feel too much within I didn't think it could be put better but sometimes live, when he gets to that verse, he sings, again, the same opening, people tell me. But instead of saying, people tell me it's a sin, he varies it. People tell me it's a crime to feel too much at any one time. She should have caught me in my prime. She would have stayed with me instead of going off to sea, leaving me. To meditate one more time on a simple twist of fate. Oh my goodness, the sheer fecundity and power of his 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 imagination and his his verbal mastery. Uh, and of course that particular variation, um, she would have stayed with me instead of go, instead of going back off to sea, leaving me to meditate gives you some sense of where the woman is going and it ties in very well with the final verse of that song which he doesn't alter uh, well he only does alter it occasionally but but which features the the docks and the sailors coming in and the sense of waiting to be chosen I'll just finish playing these bits with you with that final verse because it's so good he hears the ticking of the clocks while waves whisper to the rocks He hunts her down by the waterfront docks Where the sailors all come in Maybe she'll pick him out again How long must he wait One more time for a simple twist of fate And that's so beautiful because it hints at the possibility of renewal at the end so, yeah, I have a lot of, um, now I have to say, slightly dusty books about Bob Dylan. But in the end, it's, uh, it's the chimes of freedom flashing, playing in your mind. It's, 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 you know, the vague traces of skipping reels of rhyme. It's the phrases that come to you. I can't begin to think the, um, begin to assess the debt I owe him uh, in terms of providing beautiful music, insights, something exciting, something wild and transformative. He achieved what he called that thin, wild, mercury sound, and his, his mercurial. Um, mercury is, of course, the god of, of, of language, and 
the way a drop of mercury when it falls into the petri dish you look at you know divides and recombines and sends sh shiny scattery little beads out and then reforms that's very much right at the core of Dylan's art anyway sorry you're probably expecting a nice mouldery old leather bowl of van volume instead you've got an old guy singing Dylan but there you go uh, he's been very important to me and I I wish him very well on his 80th birthday thanks for dropping around